Sega Dreamcast, one of my favorite consoles of all time, and mine needs some work. It's not looking very clean, and uh, some things aren't working quite like they should. So, I'm going to see what I can do about all those things. First, I'm going to clean up. <clears throat> on this one for over 20 years, and uh, spent a lot of its lifetime not being used. But we're looking to address that. I didn't own one of these when they were brand brand new, but uh, picked them up pretty much as soon as they stopped making new games for it. I want to clean up the outside before I clean up the inside. A couple of problems with it so far have been the AV cables that plug in the back. Um, they're not great, they don't work fine, they're going to be replaced. Um, the plug-ins here for the controllers up front, they uh, don't always want to work. Kind of got to plug the controllers in about halfway. And uh, I think I'm going to bend some contacts in there to try and address that. Um, and biggest thing is we have this one game. I once had many in a stack. I cannot find them. Also, these old CD drives are definitely loud, especially on a Dreamcast. And um, this one might not be uh, long for this world. So, yeah. We're going to be taking out the whole CD portion of it and uh, replacing that with an SD card. We're also going to be uh, replacing this AC power in and uh, replacing a whole new power board that's going to make the power supply external. Hopefully get rid of some of the heat uh, long term. I'd also like to replace a fan here on the side that's definitely loud and doesn't work very well. But uh, that may be a project for another day as we order more parts. Got some unfortunate actual scratches on here, but uh, I'll do what I can to address those as I go. All right, on to the cleaning. There's some actually disturbing uh, gunk on the inside of the CD drive, which I don't know. This was used a lot of parties once in its life. It might have had a beer spilled on it at some point. Who knows? More likely than not, really. Especially around these power switches, too. Pretty horrifying. I'm going to use some um, alcohol for some of this cleanup, because it's nice and strong and uh, shouldn't hurt the electronic components too badly. Took out this kid's toothbrush to get into some of these grimier parts. Uh, hot tip, never. Never throw out a toothbrush. But uh, ideally, find a fresh one so you can use it to uh, do some of this scrubbing. Oh, yeah. Power button is looking a lot less ugly, ugly now. Yeah. Ooh, there's a... And I realized, too, that some of this stuff is probably a lot easier to clean up once it's open, but I don't know. It bothers me how gross it is right now. It'd be nice to make it passable before I get in the guts. I'm going to use something that you should probably never really use on a surface like this to kind of scrub off the worst of the sins here. A uh, magic eraser. Um, but it can, can kind of turn some of these nice textures a bit smooth, but it might be better than, I don't know, who cut this with a knife? That wasn't me. Just going to blast it all over with some rubbing alcohol. Big swirls. Might not get rid of all the scratches, but I might turn some of them transparent.
I were going real obsessive about this, I might consider getting some Q-tips to get into some of these spots, but uh, I'm kind of doing some bare minimum stuff at the moment. Already I can kind of feel the texture of the top here is a little bit more chalky than it would be if new. But we're not totally losing the proper texture. It's actually feeling a little bit more new. I bought a N64 at a garage sale a few months ago and spent most of the summer doing some sort of really careful detailing and replacing of parts. And at the end of all that, I was a little disappointed that, you know, I hadn't cataloged the whole journey. I had a, had a start and a finish, but I didn't get to see where I went along the way. And it's kind of part of my idea here. I wouldn't mind seeing that here with the old Dreamcast. Um, my alcohol spray here uh, claims it's 70%, but it's 99% rubbing alcohol. Make sure we don't have a bunch of water getting in these components. And um, it's also probably a sin to be using these Lysol wipes, but uh, they really helped me turn this big, ugly yellow scrape into an ugly clear scrape. I mentioned concerns about the controller ports. They've got their pin problems, but and there's also some horrific gunk that I'm going to hit first with the alcohol for safety reasons, because I don't want to be sort of bleaching this with Lysol. That's not good for metals. And when this is all apart, I'm going to be doing some more careful sort of tweezering of the contacts in here. But for now, let's get rid of some of the yellow, because no part of this was ever supposed to be yellow. Fewer electronic openings here, so I'm going to go a little more wild with the Lysol stuff. And the little seam here is especially yellow, and I suspect some of that won't really come off, because some of this might actually be the plastic yellowing. We also got hmm, little chips here around the edges. It has not been babied, but it has been loved. Be a little more careful and use more of the alcohol to scrub over here than the Lysol stuff because we've got a few more openings. And there is the deadly fan that. I would love to replace, and may someday, but right now, let's just make sure that it doesn't die, because I'm still going to need it. Now, um, I believe part of disassembling this is taking out this modem that gives us access to a place where there should be a screw in here, but oh, lo and behold, there is none. There is, however, some scary gunk. Dear God, what happened? What happened? I don't know if I've mentioned before, but this um, did not live with me for a few years. And I'm glad it came back, but definitely came back a little worse for wear. And uh, I did not buy it new either. Like I said, I got it kind of at the end of the console's life. I decided that, you know, I always wanted one, and as they were stopping making games for them, suddenly a lot of ads showed up for them. Unusually cheap, so I bought this off uh, some kid who wanted, I don't know, 50, 80 bucks or something like that to buy a PS2. Hmm. Which, those are great too. I have one of those. Maybe I'll repair it someday. It mostly works. The back is especially gnarly, or well, the bottom, but it's also especially full of a lot of holes where 
some harsh detergents. Would be a big problem if they got through. Also, the fact that this little number one is here is of some importance to me when actually doing the modifications to the optical drive. Basically, that's a good sign. If it wasn't there, not quite sure this optical uh, SD drive replacement would work or not. We'll degunk a little bit. Now, worth noting that this little bit here, the ACN, this is going to be replaced with, I believe, a 3D printed part out of it right here. The uh, different PSU. Normally, the way to get inside here is uh, unscrew these four screws. Uh, that one's already been done for me. There appears to be a screw in here, but the fact that the console lifts like that kind of tells me that screw might not be doing its job. Moving on from the cleaning ritual, it turns out that there was no screw here, there was a screw here, there was a screw here, but it wasn't doing much. I think they're all loose. Oops. One of them has come out. Two of them have come out on this little magnetic tray, and here we are, the guts of the units. Hmm. So, this whole optical drive unit's going to come out, and this whole power supply unit is coming out. All right. Um, also, this... controller board up front is gonna come out and be looked at long term we're gonna replace this battery but not today and long term we'd like to replace that hilariously small fan but unscrewing some screws on our big power supply. Very satisfying ping there. Perhaps unplugging it as well. Two screws and a clip, and right here are the pins that will be of some important to us, importance to us for the new board. So this whole board is what's coming out. Pleasingly, none of these capacitors seem to have leaked. If you're not familiar with capacitors, there are these Little guys that look like AA batteries, but teeny tiny. And uh, as they leak, they start to bulge at the top. And these are all looking surprisingly fresh, but that doesn't mean that they weren't going to fail. And this whole rig gets replaced by this little tiny power supply board which is a lot simpler. There we go, there we go. And shockingly simple to install as far as I understand because it just pushes right onto the same pins that the previous one came off of. And we've still got a screw left here to attach it with. There. 
secure it in place. Now this becomes that. Now, how could we replace such a big board with such an itty bitty one? It's not just technology having changed over time. It's that in here you'd have a full power plug, um, what they call mains power, you know, something coming straight from the wall. What we've got here, instead of this AC power coming into this, you're going to have DC power, which is direct current kind of thing that you'd see with uh, one of your big wall warts, which means we're going to need this external adapter. It's going to plug into our barrel here, and this part is where all the power converting and everything's going to be. So the heat is outside instead of in. One hopes. Um, these power kits often come with their own adapter, but I was a little dubious on the specs, so I actually bought the kit without the adapter and bought a more powerful one with a bit more amperage and a bit higher rating online. These, I think, are probably generally intended for a laptop. So to ensure that this little barrel plug, as they call it, has somewhere to stay in there, we've got this little piece of plastic where we can push it through and install that little nut across. Keep it in place, and now it lives right here at the back of the console. And that allows us to plug it in using this. Turns out it fits. Could have tested that earlier. Hooray! So before I move on to replacing this big, surprisingly heavy CD drive, I'm going to take a little pokeroo here at the controller board. Now, to get this off first, we just unplug a little ribbon cable there that connects that to that, and there's a little tiny power cable here that I'm going to very carefully unplug off camera. I've got my own uh, little box here for tweezers and spudgers. Seriously, some of my best tweezers have gone missing, but hopefully. Hmm, <laughs> I must be more careful. Continuing to use the most precise of tools to get the board out. Of course, I'll be using an Allen key with a little screw on the edge to take these screws out, because why not? We have some kind of progress. Gentle, gentle. All right, so this is the controller board, and in here are some pins I have to be careful with. Trying to bend them out. There's a little bit more bounce on these than those, and it's kind of the this one, your first player, that I'm having the most trouble with. So, I'm going to work on that. So what I've done here is very carefully pull up some of these springy little contacts here to make sure that they'll make better contact with something that's actually plugged into them. I'm also dusting some things off. Now, a lot of people use the word deoxid to kind of broadly refer to contact cleaner, which is like, it's the most um, popular brand of contact cleaner. Uh, what I have here is Clean and Lube, which is um, actually not quite contact cleaner because it's a contact cleaner and, as you'd say, has some lube. So there's a little bit of silicone lube in here. So it's not perfect for this, but better than nothing. I use the little straw there to squirt a bit in each of these ports and 
carefully scrub here with the brush and hopefully I'm not catching on any contacts because that would do more harm than good. Ultimately I might end up desoldering one of these and doing something like taking number four, which you hardly ever use, and putting it on number one, which has gotten 90% of the use its entire life. A little bit of greasiness comes from that, but the clean part of the clean and lube is still being done. We'll ignore the luby part. Now, with a lot of the extra clutter cleared away, or at least pushed to the side, I'm going to go on to the main event, which is this optical drive, which gets replaced by a couple of things. Mainly this board that will plug in mm, right in the same place the drive has back there and it takes an SD card but it's kind of a pain in the ass changing an SD card if it's way in the guts here so it also comes with an extension plug the SD card here and be able to plug the SD card and a thing that'll come up here because all of this black plastic is going to go away with the drive and we'll replace it with this guy that's going to be roughly the same size as it pops up through and it'll let us pop an SD card in there and give us a little button here to um, change the game as needed. So we go about getting the drive out by screws. I haven't yet put in the controller board there just to give me a little more room to work and not bump into that delicate cable. <laughs> there we go. Wow, that was easy. And the whole board plugs in along here. Much in the way this will plug in there now instead. Almost frighteningly simple. This big chunk goes to the side. Now, I'm going to search the package here to see if there are any standoffs to help this not just flop around like that. To place it ever so awkwardly and then hope that running the screw through will help us find a way. Absolutely. I'm assuming this is the screw we're intended to use because it's the only one long enough. It's really biting in there. The rest of these screws are little teeny tiny boys. Which I imagine have more to do with this big case. But before we get into that, Let's actually install the SD extension rig. It is possible to run these things with just this here and not this big plastic rig and everything, but basically you're, I don't know, it looks awkward and you're reaching in and touching this bare board for the sake of a little bit. This extra little 3D printed kit makes it look better and work better. Oh, there's a very weak connection in there. Okay. Teensy screws are attached to magnetic 
little dish there, and teeny tiny screwdriver is finally coming in handy. And with two of those screws in there, I did the other one off camera because I didn't do a very good job of it. We've got this part here where one can insert an SD card. Also, we've got this button here to press that little tech switch. And it's got this cute little Dreamcast swirl on it. So, I imagine set that up. Now, <laughs> let's be careful how we're bending that ribbon cable. Keep it inside there. Line it up with this stuff. All right, and I think we should be able to attach it to the board there. Looking at this a little more carefully, I am able to screw that in there, but then that comes off. There's somewhere here on this guy where we want to screw that to this before it goes to that. So, this fellow's coming off for a second. And free from the constraints of the system itself, we can sort of make sure that this is attached to the underside of the board before... Oh. I hate how that cable is going. Uh, huh. Maybe, maybe down there. All right, that feels a little better. Whew, woof. Do not like that strain. But once it's in, it's in. All right, and now with this together, this works more of a unit with a clicky button that I can now whoop, attach. Back to the console. First by carefully plugging it into the board there. And along the way making sure that that screw is lined up to go in to the RF shield as it needs. Ah, this is much more secure. Now we get this there, and we're getting somewhere. Now, we've successfully replaced this chunk with this much lighter little thing that will let us pop an SD card right in there. Wait till this is all back together to pop that SD card in. So, my next move is to put the control board back on. And no clips, no clamps. And on goes the top. Carefully, carefully, carefully. Carefully, he says, as he stomps it. There it goes. Oh, ho, ho, ho. And open, and we have this. We have our different power cable. And we have this guy clipping back on and looking hideous as anything. Now I switched to a different angle to try and see if all this actually worked. The first thing I want to do is... Hmm, those familiar with the Dreamcast might know that when you turn it on, most of them tend to make this horrible beep. But it's not actually the system. It's these little VMU rigs that go in the controller. And they have two little wafer batteries in them that's pretty much perpetually dead. But, pop these in. Mmm, that wonderful sound that warns you that the battery's dead. Hopefully it won't come on when we start the console. Because instead... Well, the MU will have its own little power. Oh my gosh, it lets me select the year. Uh, let's select um, 
September, let's say, 9th, 1999. Yep, that's the time. It's midnight. Sure thing. Yes? Yes. Woohoo! Alright. Go to sleep. Next, I've also got these new AV cables to try. Because the ones I have are a bit dubious. Oh, and a final thing, as I was putting it back together, I noticed that some of our uh, spare parts here, these screws that were no longer needed as we took out some of the disk drive and everything, perfect to fill in these missing screws to hold the console together. So that is fantastic. It's more solid than it's been for quite a long time now. Hopefully it actually starts. We've got our new DC power plugged in and we'll try the new ooh, AV plug. That's a nice tight hold at the very least. And put that in to the old CRT here. And hopefully, if all went well, we've got a light. That's a good sign. Huh? It works. But there's no SD card yet. It's asking me to set the time, as it always does. That's because the battery in there is uh, dead in the side, but, let's see, if it'll recognize our SD card. Let me try powering it off and on again. We don't have our horrible squeak. That's a great sign. Boots, that's an even better sign. I don't care what time it is. Start game disc. Mm hmm. Let's see what we can do. So the good news, bad news part of that startup was it started. Power seems to work. And the controller worked to control the menus. But that game disc warning means that uh, potentially I might not have uh, formatted the SD card right, or potentially this might not be working perfectly. I never should have put it together before actually testing it to see if all our parts work. So, just the bare card here, none of the extension, none of the all for for all. Let's try... We got this. Same. Oh. Excellent. Okay, so, woohoo! All right, this works. Perhaps it was a poor connection. It's like, it's party time. I think this is good enough for me. Oh, a bit of flickering. That might be loose AV cables, but perfect. I'm gonna put this back together carefully. Make sure that SD card works with all this junk on it. Let's try. All right. Hopefully nothing came loose. We'll bring that back in. Yeah, we'll go back in. Oh, tight squeeze. New AC, DC power, and turn this on once more. Plug in a controller. We have contact. Great success. I'm going to call that a win. 